well, I have a habit of like when I want to, when I say I'm going to do something, I do it sort of thing. Yeah. Like when I'm going to build an igloo, I'm going to do it. And I actually have built an igloo. <laughs> Yes, so here we are, uh, Nerdly Out Loud, the official podcast of nerdly.co.uk, your favourite British website for all of your news reviews and exclusive interviews. We're at Romford, we're inside Romford, I'm finally inside Romford. It's great, it's great to be here. And we are talking to the director and some of the, well, introduce yourselves. This is the short um, Desires and Delusions. Tell us who you are and what you did. So I'm Nicole Sarah Fry and I'm the director, writer and actor and a bit of a costume maker as well, so kind of doing multiple things. I'm Anita Fry, I'm producer, co-writer and fellow costume maker with Nicole. Um, um, Julie Butterworth, cinematographer, editor, collaborator and did some sound booming as well for the film. Bit of everything, indie filmmaking, yeah. that's how we do it, that's how we do it. On, on, on that Nicole, um, I saw that you've... You've pretty much done every aspect of, of filmmaking you could possibly do. Yeah, I tried to avoid the technical camera working. We actually, we did have a shot that I had to handle the camera for, which I did not enjoy. And it's very, it's, you really, which is actually a very eye-opening experience because it makes you realise how difficult, like all the, you know, how you have to use your, like, um, your different skills and you have to do two things at once. And it's like, it is really difficult. So it definitely made me appreciate more mm. how difficult it is to achieve like as a director you can be quite dramatic so it helps you realize basically what how difficult his job is i suppose as well though like the the, the best kind of director is a, a director who knows every aspect of what they're doing and some directors don't they, they just focus on one thing but you've you've clearly learned a little bit of everything yeah i think it's important especially with acting i mean my character is not like the biggest character in it, but I think just generally have an acting experience. It's like it makes you realise the process. Of yeah. Someone, you know, when you're giving advice to the character, the way you're telling, maybe to advise, like maybe take it in a different direction, you understand that that's not an easy thing to do. And I feel like you just generally have, you can be, you can put yourself in the minds of the different sorts of people. Mm. And if you've never done acting, you can have a script that you've written, but like telling an actress to do, oh, cry or something, you know, you have to let them. It, some people can. It's, but it's like an, even with, you know, costume, I mean, Again, you have, you, re you realise how every little role plays such a big part, and I think it is important to realise how important everyone is. Because if one person is, you know, not there, then it does impact it a lot. So even with writing, I mean, I, we, we co-wrote it, but just even like the writers on on board and stuff, and, like having people that are listening, making sure everything said right. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think it makes you realise more how people work together. So. Well, I want to thank you anyway because I I'm not a massive high regency sort of period movie uh, TV shows, although they are they're all the rage right now, they're, they're everywhere, but yours was a breath, breath, breath of fresh air. It was completely different, same but different, and the way you tackled it with like the, the modern day sort of twist to the dating scene and everything. What made you want to do a period piece like this? So, um, actually in the Q&A we talked a bit about this as well, but it's, uh, it's, it's quite interesting, I feel like the, the time period is very, it's such a beautiful like, time with yeah. all the bulls and everything, and I think, and they do discuss about like marriage and kind of courting each other, but I feel like the bit that makes it less relatable is just how over the top and weird, it's so far from what we experience today that it's just, you can't relate to it, mm -hmm. so like someone like yourself, like we, that's what we actually were saying, it's like, a lot of people, maybe it's not their sort of thing, the general period drama like Jane Austen, great writing but not it's not for everyone so we wanted it's to not. make it more relatable so even someone that's not usually into period stuff it has something for them yeah so people might have, like had you know their friend that did tinder or bumble or anything so it, i definitely think that having that topic included makes people relate to at least one of the characters you might be the friend that's like oh my god i don't agree with that which is what i am kind of real life. Yeah. i don't really think it works so i relate a lot more to my character yeah but some people might be like oh no they're kind of like the hopeless romantic and again you know some people might be the henry archibalds of the world which i really <laughs> hope they're not but um <laughs> some people are but i think yeah it, it's it has i think it's quite an open has quite a big uh, broad reach for people to enjoy and and as a cinematographer you've got to make this grand regency lifestyle look as epic as it does? Um, it was certainly challenging considering, you know, we were working with a small crew that we haven't worked before because it was our very first project. Um, so it was difficult to uh, film at locations 
in an emergency environment because just from an audio recording perspective, there can't be planes flying overhead, cars driving past. Yeah. So even when you pick the location, it's very how far is that road away? Because once you start recording with these sensitive microphones, I'm sure you know yep. other people do this, you all start hearing a lot of things um, that don't belong, uh, especially in a period piece. So that was difficult. We filmed in the hottest week of the year. That didn't help. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. It, we would have needed more gear to really block up more sun and we would have you know needed more crew to really manage that situation which we didn't have so some things we had to fix and post and that was challenging as well so a lot of lessons learned but we pulled it through and i think it, it looks nice for what it, it is. looks great and, um, yeah really really happy how it turned out so once you once you've got your idea for your movie and you know what you're going to do how do you then start putting together your your crew as you say, it's a, it's a bit of a smaller crew and you didn't really know everybody. How did you go about putting people together? I really need to let Nicole answer that because she was the driving force behind it. So can I just pass it back to you? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a habit of like when I want to, when I say I'm going to do something, I do it sort of yeah. When I'm going to build an igloo, I'm going to do it. And I actually have built an igloo. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to build two, 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 two and a half. Um, but two and a half. It's, <laughs> it's, it's finding people, actually a lot, so the Yasmin that plays um, Georgiana. Yes. Um, she, I know her from Bridgeton, we met on there. And um, she's a super talented actress and she literally nailed the role. I, I don't think we even, I just knew she she looked like she could bring it to life. Obviously she was in Bridgeton so she has that yeah. look anyway. But honestly, and then I knew that David, um, Dave, um, he was Henry Archibald, so I knew him also from Bridgeton. And then Clara um, is played by Lottie, and mm -hmm. I actually met her on another job. But most people that were there we knew, so it's, it was mostly just trying to find the people that are passionate at what they do yeah. and getting them on board and seeing if it's something that they align with. And I think, you know, they share like, lot, like lots of like clips and stuff, so I think they're quite proud to be in it. I think that's important. So definitely, we don't have, definitely. We don't have loads of crew, to be honest, because we don't know. I think cause we live down in Bournemouth, so we don't. There's not technically loads of like crew people, right. but for our next one we have met a lighting guy, which is quite nice. So we're slowly building up our like pool of people, but it definitely is difficult, I think. Even to, just because a lot of people want to do something, but then maybe they're like they say yeah, and then it just doesn't really go through. So it's, it definitely is hard to find those people. When you do find them, hold on to them. Yeah. Sort of thing. Keep using them. And, and quickly on that, this is potentially the one interview that I'll do this week that my wife will watch because she loves Bridget. <laughs> so just quickly on that um, but th there is an epic world here there's a there's a bigger world here and you kind of do a little bit of world building with the whole um, the Pandora's box kind of thing and the, the dating side of things but would you ever expand on this would you ever go to the next level feature maybe miniseries um, yeah that's something I don't know if I mentioned it to you actually because that'd be interesting because a lot of people said that to us because we did it on purpose we wanted to end the film when we were in it for the Heroes mm -hmm. of we wanted to end it in an open-ended way, so it doesn't feel like it's just there's nothing else that more could happen. Yeah. Even if it was gonna just end like that, we wouldn't have. We don't like it; it just cuts off. But basically, we've planned like a five-part mini-series. Actually, nice. so we've got nice. like lots of other things happening, going to London, balls, you know, different types of dating. So we wanted to expand upon what would the world look like back then when you're really any using every means to find the perfect guy or girl. So. So like a sort of high regency speed dating. We do have some speed dates, <laughs> yes. and we we we, ta we like to you we like it to be while we're using something modern. We want it to be realistic, so a lot you would notice a lot of the dialogue is traditional. It's not like full, fully as complex as Jane Austen, but we yeah. want it to be quite authentic. We're only adding in like a little dusting of yeah. modern takes. So when we have the speed dating, we we do like a clever thing. Well, I won't go into it, but we. We have a clever take of what's something they used to do back then that could lead into why they're speed dating. So we have a lot. We have done research as well, which I think is quite a good thing to do. Oh, so definitely, definitely. Definitely, we've planned different characters. So like honestly, like the whole. We've written two episodes, haven't we? So we've written two episodes, and we've got the plan. So we just work. We've literally. I've got a pitch document as well. So we're working on getting someone Excellent. interested. But you never know. I love it. I love it. And um, we, we, any filmmaker, any creative, um, whether it be an actor, producer, cinematographer, director, they can tell me everything that's wrong with what's up on the screen when they watch it in the cinema and they see it on the big screen. You watched it on the big screen today, and I wanted to know um, what's what's the moment in there that you guys saw up on the screen that you thought, you know what, we got that, we smashed that, that looks amazing. What are you most proud of? I think the overall, because I did think quite about a lot about the uh, the overall kind of look. So like when I planned out costumes, because we made the costumes. So mm. I, when I, I looked at the colours, like people won't notice some of these things, attention to detail, like in the rug, it's the same colours that they're yeah. wearing. And then we made the box and the portrait. So I think just seeing it all 
come together. We, yeah, it's one thing we're quite proud of is just like generally just bringing it to life. The script, the comedy, probably the picnic scene. I would say is I do that. I do like the scene where they're on their date because I I laugh every time I watch it. But the scene with them at the picnic, it's like it's all the different. It's the different aspects, like different people's opinions, and like different characters, and just the way it all overall looks. It's like really pretty. Mm. I think so. I'm quite. And it's the main bit of the film. It's the most fun. I, I, th- so. I think it's the it's the characters as well that make that because you've got the one that's like. The, the one girl who's like super optimistic about her friend. Yeah. You've got the one girl who's like, no, you know, fad. And then you've got like, just looking for love and, and everything like that. It's a great little scene. You've got so many different contrasting moments there. It's, yeah. it's a fantastic scene. To balance. I always see it as like, you know, so for Georgiana, it's like, she's the devil and the angel. One's yeah. telling her to do it, one's telling her not to. So I feel like it's a good balance in a friendship because if they were both against her, it wouldn't be that fun to no. watch because you'd just be like, okay, this is being really negative. <laughs> but like at the same time, you can each person's opinion is valid. So like, her just wanting to find someone, she's just gonna try something different. I mean, how is being introduced at a ball, dancing with them, and then being engaged two weeks after that any yeah. better? So it's, I think, it definitely has, like I said before, it 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 has like characters you can connect to. I think that's what makes it more funny. Some people will generally watch it and think, oh. I really like my character. Yeah. Some people that maybe are more like Georgiana would be like, yeah, I have a friend like that. Oh, she's a bit <laughs> I don't know about her. And, and, <laughs> and for, for you guys as well, um, things that you see on the screen that you think are just, you know, we nailed it. I think I said this in the q and I feel like it was, well, especially the parlor scene, mm. which was difficult to do because it was a private house and they were cooking next door. And the kids were playing, weren't they outside? So that, but it, I, it looks stunning. Um, the parlour in the parlour, um, and all the actresses look, they just looked fantastic. And that was a real pleasure to watch that being filmed. And the other thing was, like Paul said, the dialogue coming to life. Yeah. Really wrote. So yeah, really appreciated that. Yeah, uh, I thought the same thing. I think what stood out to me was just seeing the actors' performances and how well they were at, at, at delivering. And these characters and how that then came across the camera. I think that was so so nice to see that professionalism from them to shine through from, from all of the cast and mm-hmm. even the short really brought it to life and made you know really made it impacting. But did you did any of you and I would hope the answer to this is yes, but did you have a sense when you were filming and during production like we're making something really cool here, this is gonna Well right from the get go knowing that this is a this is a first time project to do Regency is not only challenging, but <laughs> certainly like putting yourself out there and it's like, yeah. like diving the deep end, isn't it really? So yeah. if you can pull this off, okay, then, then you will probably do all right doing something simpler in the future. So uh, it was good. So we knew like we're going to put everything into this, you know, as much as we can, um, as much as our knowledge allows to, to make this project reality. And that really helped just, you know, bring it all together. So next we're filming in space. <laughs> <laughs> Who's that? Tom Cruise, I think, is doing that. Oh God, yeah, but Tom Cruise can do anything. Yes. You know, like he can do anything he wants now. <laughs> Probably a Mission Impossible would be fine. It'll be fine. Ap- apart from um, obviously working on uh, a mini series and everything like that, and, and more on this project, is there anything else we're working on? Anything we're actively putting out there? like a couple ideas just generally like pre-production but our main thing that we're almost like finished um working on is uh, a 60s product so another nice thing it kind of again i like the idea of not rep- necessarily representing the real 60s so i always say it's like between austin powers and reality it's not quite as wacky <laughs> as that but we have quite like bright costumes it's like it's just it, it's not like maybe the brownie kind of more like mundane mm-hmm. 60s that a lot of suburbs would have it's definitely more colorful um and we're going to experimenting with new um, like uh, grades with Dehancer, which is quite interesting. So we're doing like different sort of a different look with, with more of a filmic look because mm-hmm. of the sixties. So again, with that one, we've taken the idea, a, an idea from the present, and taking it to the past. Because in the sixties, um, only half of people had a telephone at home. Yeah, right, so right. it's kind of it's called Lies on the Line, and basically, um, there's a guy called Lawrence, and he he installs phones in people's houses as a job for GPO, General Post Office. He drives around, he thinks it's a very normal job. Then something happens that kind of triggers him to his mm-hmm. past. We see what happens and we realize, we get revealed that he's not just a normal guy and he's actually tapping all of their phones. And he like uses basically anything he hears that's something that they wouldn't want to know. 
what no, they wouldn't want anyone to know and it's like he uses that against them to like almost teach them a lesson because mm-hmm. he said lies in the line he, he hates lies so he targets everyone so it's quite an interesting you can't, it's kind of like a de- Dexter situation where you yeah. don't know is do you, is he that bad for doing it like is he teaching no of course he's not and then also but some people might think he is no he's not he's technically invading people's privacy so it you know he's is he though them. Is he though? <laughs> well, technically, there's a contract <laughs> and they didn't read it. So we usually make a joke of that where she's like flipping the page right. of the contract and he's looking at her like, oh, I'm not going to read it then. Okay. <laughs> it's like, like, you know, when you get an update and you yeah, ask you yeah. So we have, it's, it's very subtly nodding to like that kind of idea of like, you know, modern day, like you might have your phone and listening to you and mm-hmm. talking about fridges for 20 minutes and suddenly Facebook Marketplace is like, yep. oh, it's a bit weird. Oh, so we, kind of yeah, we, we'll talk about something now and it will come up. So it's kind of very subtly alluding to that but we wanted to again I don't want to just set something in the 60s I'm like how can I make it a little bit different yeah. so and it has quite a lot of like easter eggs this this next film is Julian can talk a bit more about it but like cinematography wise it's definitely a bit more it's a lot more creative because our previous film we did have creative shots we had to cut out for length wise right. but it's mostly tripod because we thought the dialogue is quite complex it's funny we just want to stick and just show reactions we have mostly tripod set up in that yeah. um, and I think it works with like a period piece because it's quite a simple like pretty but this next one is a lot more like I, 60s I want to be fun moving to around be. exactly so we've written actually well I've written three custom songs we have another girl that's written a song so we're going to record all like original songs for the film that nice. sound like 60s so it will, it will really help with the vibe but I don't know if Gina wants to briefly mention some of our shots like the types we're going to do the songs sound brilliant, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> they, do, they do sound brilliant, and we're going to finish the last one uh, on Friday. Recording on Friday. Thursday. Thursday. Um, yeah, uh, we look forward to sharing Lives in the Line um, with the world. I think um, there's a lot more going on. It's, we, we noticed, like, when we're watching it back now, it's like it's changing uh, location a lot. It's mm-hmm. really keeping the pace up. It's just, you know, it just keeps the mind busy. It's just, a lot of colours in, in the in the locations that are you know fought through um, you know from the clothing to the background so you see it everywhere sort of like that really really helps bring the whole thing to life. It's very vibrant. Yeah. Uh, Nicole mentioned using the hansa, so we'd be using a um, you know because we can't you know budget wise shoot an actual film, so we're using a, a fairly sophisticated um, film emulation, so to speak, to give it that look of film and halation. But without the bad parts, because we want to take the good parts of film, yeah. like gate weave, we not want to use that, but we want to use some of the, some of the, the nice things that the film does um, in terms of looks and sort of use that. And uh, hopefully it'll it'll be you know a nice step up from um, desires and illusions in terms of just photography and the look and the production, bigger crew and more professionalism. But don't lose that dialogue. Don't lose that heart, because that was one of my favourite things. I do love I love some good dialogue and. Yeah, definitely. It definitely it's a lot more simplistic with the dialogue because like, it's a completely different genre it's more like a psychological drama I would class it as so it definitely has like some moments but I mean it's not it's it's not as witty as Disaster oh. Solutions oh you've lost us um. <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's, we wanted to do it, like I said like Juno said we wanted to see what we could do visually yeah. We're like, how do we then we want we're kind of more focused on okay let's make it visually looking appealing like really diff like kind of funky good or like a looks with our our composer for d and for design solutions sorry i call it dnd i know that's such a drag. to be honest to be honest D&D. that's what i've been calling it yeah, okay. Oh, okay. <laughs> we, can overthink, no, joking. we can claim D&D. um but it with that we have beautiful music in yeah. that film and it's all composed by dan woodlock and I think some, sometimes it's so natural that it just, it just fades, like people don't notice it's there, so that's why we actually haven't got many, like people don't really notice the music necessarily that much, but this film is, again, it's just, it's kind of doing very different, it's mm-hmm. like, I mean, it's actually a full song, very much, so it's yeah. supposed to know, it's like, it's more the audio, the visuals is the most important, and it still has an interesting story, um, and it's, but it's more communicating about, like I said, the visuals, the expressions, the reactions, than rather than what they're saying, but with the dialogue, while it individually might not be as complex, it actually has more links to other things that are happening. So like he'll say something, and then at the end, there's right, like a link, right. it will say it again, and you'll be like, so I've mentioned the, you never know, yeah, I, I won't ruin that. But, uh, <laughs> but for example, there's like, yeah, like a statement a character will say, and then it will be come up again, you'll, you'll yeah. realize the true meaning of it. You're like, oh, so kind of like that. So something it's, that it's seems, way, something that seems so like, just sort of a side thing, and then all yeah. of a sudden it's, Hugely yeah, important. You might have to watch it again. It's one of those films, like some films are like that, you just you don't really fully realise. I definitely have that when I watch, even like I watched Thor again, I was like, there was a scene, I was like, oh, I didn't <laughs> realise that. And sometimes it's like, sometimes it's actually something that's quite important. I'm yeah. like, oh, I didn't even. 
because if you're not fully in like watching it but um yeah well, we're definitely looking forward to doing more writing for D D actually because we really find it we find it quite fun we, it is we, fun we literally just laugh like it's just, it's just like we just laugh writing it so we're like with our next bit we even moments at the end of like the final part i can just imagine it in my head and i just laugh because i'm like it's just so it could be yeah. so funny i just want to really do it so fingers crossed we can get that well, on that, we'll uh, we'll start wrapping this out. And um, first of all, before we do go, though, let people know where they can they can find you on social media and where they can find your projects, all that good stuff. And then we'll uh, we'll wrap out there. Desires and delusions. If you just type into Instagram, we have a page with our trailer. We post fun clips yeah. of like you know behind the scenes. Um, and then I have I think all our socials are kind of linked to that. But it's mine's just Nicole Sarah Fry. Keep it simple. Um, <laughs> my nice headshot. I think you have. Oh, you because you want to know to the production company. Yeah, so the, the production company that I set up in the pandemic and, um, is called Spiral Stare, but like staring, productions. Um, so that's online on Instagram as well. I've got my web page as well. Um, and then Julian is online. But you'll see, if you if you search at Desires and Delusions, you'll find us all easily. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah, you will be able to say Yeah, I'm Julian Butterworth. You search on Instagram, but, you know, again, you can find all of us on, on Desires and Delusions and Spiral Stare with your link to there's awesome. not too many of us to scroll through. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. Keep it simple. No. <laughs> well, I have to say thank you for, for submitting the movie and thank you for letting us show it and, and thank you for being here and doing this. It's absolutely fantastic. Again, it, it's not really a genre that I'm massive on, but I really enjoyed Desires and Delusions and I think it's, it's funny, it's witty, it's well written and I think the whole concept of the dating angle, I just loved it. Oh, I'm really glad you enjoyed it. That's actually almost like a really good, it's, like, it's nice to hear a compliment from someone that loves Bridgeton, but to hear the best compliments from people that isn't there normally, their sort of thing. <laughs> and they're like, you've got me interested, I want to know what happens. So, um, so that's why I think it would be nice to reach more people when we get to Absolutely. Maybe more people could be like that. So then maybe they're more open to anything in the future that comes out. It's also period. Maybe they'll start watching Downton after or something. <laughs> I'll, not, I'll, not be, I'll not be watching Downton. Don't say that, you'll catch one episode. <laughs> that with like RuPaul's Drag Races on I'm like he's like oh should I turn it off he's like no I've got a little bit of that I've got a little bit of that it's, um, sometimes you uh, my, my wife will be sitting watching Bridgerton and I will sit down for like 10 minutes and then I remember that it's Bridgerton so I get on <laughs> yeah, <laughs> but no Desires is fantastic it's a great show it's a great show thank you <laughs>